people will often dress up as a technical argument or a moral argument, when often it's more than that. Often it's even a metaphysical argument. That they've got some sense that the, this hubristic is bad in the same way that gravity is a constant, then hubris uh, is a constant. Okay. Um, and here, here I said we're going to mention the simulation theory. So there's this idea that we already live in a vast simulation of whatever type, and all sorts of scenarios fall under that umbrella. Um, you know, and, and I have met people who have some intuition, like Nick Bostrom, actually. Um, I don't know what his personal beliefs are, but he, he makes quite a clear argument that uh, if you make certain assumptions, then statistically you're more likely to be living in a simulation than not. And some people take that at face value and then have other built-in ideas about what the simulator is or could be. And then based on those assumptions, they have ideas about what implications that has for any simulation we might do. You know, they might have um, ideas about, you know, the simulator is basically a guy with a beard on the top of a hill. And that, um, and that within the simulator's simulation, if they're not the same thing, um, simulation should only be allowed up to a certain point. And that sounds, that's quite patronizingly um, cartoonish religion type version. Here's another way of saying the same thing. If we're living in a simulation, no matter how seriously you take the idea, there might be the, this nagging intuition that it's a, simu a simulation with limited computational <coughs> resources. That there are only so many recursive models that could happen within the simulation. And so that basically the simulations can't go on to create simulations that create simulations, create simulations. And if you're the kind of person who's taking this idea seriously, then you have to go, well, what point on the chain are we at? Are we at the bottom? Are we the ones that can't create another level? Now, you know, again, that's angels on the heads of pins, but it does come up. And quite often people find it very hard to articulate, but it's a very real idea in there. My answer to all these things is a combination of two things. One is a healthy dose of Occam's razor. Um, if you've got a simpler way of describing the way things seem to be, then use it, please. Um, and similarly, um, a healthy dose of willingness to question authority. The reason I mention that is that quite often, the people who will make these metaphysical arguments are in some level of implicit or explicit authority over you. And, um, and there is a pressure to, even if it's just to quietly say nothing, there is a pressure to, um, to basically see that they have a perfectly reasonable point of view, even if you actually don't think they do. So all I'm saying is that go for the simpler explanation if you can. Don't feel um, encouraged to, disagree, uh, to agree when maybe you otherwise would have disagreed. And I think some of the worst aspects of this kind of minefield will um, be avoided without you having to sort of take a, a hard stance and say, all metaphysical stuff is wrong. Um, which I think leads to its own problems, which is what I'm going to talk about now. Okay, so, convergence, chaos, and unpredictability. I'm going to assume that people um, understand the basics of, um, the basic tenets of chaos maths. But basically, um, complicated systems, uh, apparently chaotic systems, can, um, the chaotic behavior can be instigated by very, very small changes in initial, uh, differences in initial conditions within the system. And if you couple that with the observations of any number of people, that basically technological development is accelerating. I mean, even if, you, um, even if you don't buy into particular details, it's quite obvious that we live in a society that has a pretty rapid uh, pace of change going on. Technology is being developed apparently faster and faster all the time. And that has a knock-on effect to all sorts of things. Some of them are technical. There are little technical feedback, uh, feedback loops that go on, which is the kind of thing that Ray Kurzweil often points out, which is to say, when a new technology is developed, it makes the development of another piece of technology easier, which feeds back into the development of another piece of technology. But these are not just technical questions. There are economic factors, and there are social factors. All these other kind of things we've been talking about. So just because some, someone might have no technical understanding of things, but they might have a particular world view, or they might be um, someone like an artist who uses the technologies, and influences the way they're perceived, even though they don't have any particular opinion about any of this stuff. This rapidly turns into this complicated stew of unpredictability, really, really rapidly. In the short term, you might be able to work out what's going to go on, but five, six, seven steps down the road, any forecast you make about how these technologies are going to unroll is going to be um, potentially flawed, at least. 
Now, the only reason I mention this is the others, it's been easy. Um, up till now, it would be easy to sit back and say, well, if you're generally on board with these kind of ideas, it'd be easy to see the other categories as the kind of flaws in thinking that other people have when they're trying to make arguments to you. I, in my humble opinion, this is the kind of thing that people from technical backgrounds and who are often into the kind of ideas that revolve around transhumanism, this is the kind of thing we are prone to. Overly linear thinking and forecasting. And it's not just about massively underestimating complexity when considering any situation. It's also about um, locking onto quite limited definitions of what things are and what they can be. Like for example, um, I was once party to a conversation where one person was saying, okay, God, the existence of God, this is a, this is a question. And, uh, and other people came out and said, all right, okay, I don't, I don't believe in this, that, and the other. And that's fine. And then what I said was, okay, but what about God? Imagine that you don't believe in, in an omnipotent creator, deity, whatever. But what about the idea being a real thing in the world? It's, you can't deny that there are a lot of people who do believe in that. And their beliefs, through their actions, have a lot of influence in the world. So this is a very real, very influential idea, if nothing more. And I noticed a number of people who are actively resistant to this idea. It's like, no, it's just an idea. God doesn't exist. And I, I said, no, no, but hang on. God, the word, the thing that influences people's behaviors, that exists, doesn't it? And I thought this was self-evident. A lot of people say, no, 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 God does not exist. And I was like, oh, right, there's a fundamental miscommunication here. And then I, and I would have just left it at that, except it occurred to me that anyone who is not willing to acknowledge a subtlety of argument like that is oversimplifying the world. And they will not be able to make an accurate forecast about what might happen in the implementation of a technology. I mean, an example is that a lot of times someone's come up with a great idea in a lab, um, but it never made it into the world because of some factor that's essentially got nothing to do with technical issues. It was maybe economic or maybe just social. Maybe it was the wrong color. You know, they decided to release it in green and green was not that year's color. And so this perfectly good technology never got past 1,200 users. Um, not that I personally would know, but whenever I mention this to people, there's normally at least one person in the room who says, Betamax! Betamax was brilliant! VHS, by God, VHS was shit! Why did nobody buy Betamax? <laughs> and it was, it was just economics and social stuff. I mean, economics started it. I mean, presume, uh, apparently it was the superior platform. Initially, there were economic reasons it didn't get rolled out fast enough, but there's also stuff with Blu-ray and that kind of thing that's relevant today. Um, and, yeah, Windows. But after a certain point, social factors come in. I mean, what if pe kids from 16 to 25, you know, that's your disposable income, and they're not buying the thing because their friends don't have it, and therefore it's not cool, and there's a knock-on effect. There's all this stuff that the developers of the technology were probably never thinking about. And that's the kind of thing I'm getting at when I'm getting at complexity. Okay. Right, so we talked about complexity, and I, I couldn't. I, I saw this when I was... Looking around for cute pictures, I couldn't resist. Um, okay. All right. Last but last but not least. So imagine you're taking all these things on board and you're assessing whether or not a um, a technology can work. All the confidence bias. Somebody's willing to accept any conclusion that comes on the table, but there's something flawed in their decision making, forecasting, whatever. Maybe they don't have the right evidence. Maybe they're making making a, uh, a maybe they've got flawed logic. Well. Okay, so worldview bias, very quickly, it's the elephant in the room, it's the kind of thing we've already talked about. They're logically impeccable, working with good evidence, and that this person is somehow unwilling to accept particular conclusions because of a priori beliefs. It's not necessarily, there's one thing I want to say, it's not necessarily pick even this, they might not understand, they might not even know that they have these beliefs. These are just the underlying parameters of what they know about the world that inform their idea of what's possible and what's not. It might just be a simple case of not having been exposed to these ideas. I mean, something being really new turns some people on, but a lot of other people run screaming until they're being exposed to an idea three or four times or more. But the whole other category, the more important one, competence bias. There's all sorts of things that could go wrong. So say you're an open-minded character. Whatever the conclusions you come to, you're willing to accept them. But for some reason, you can't reach the right conclusions. Um, 
kind 